So this is the sound of the internal microphone. This is the sound of the Rode Wireless Go. Nice, isn't it? Right, let's do it. So I'm just about to leave the room. Probably still going beautifully right now. I'm gonna keep on walking. So there's this guy called Philip Bloom and he used to use big cameras, but now he can't bother to carry them anymore, so he uses smaller ones. I don't think you're hearing the wireless goes at their best right now. And that is simply down to the fact that the Canon has those really bad preamps. So I think it's important to look at some other cameras just to see how it compares with those. So I'm gonna have a look at a Sony a7 III, the Fuji X-T3 and a Panasonic GH5. Before I do anything else, I need to establish that the sound that you're hearing right now is the camera mic of the Canon EOS R, uh, which is an interesting camera. Um, it's got a lot going for it, um, which is basically the autofocus, um, the flippy screen is useful for many things. Not for everything, but for many things. Uh, the image is nice. It's got lots of downsides as well, but this is not a video about the EOS R. Um, but yeah, this is the internal mic. And as Canon internal mics go, it's actually one of the better ones. This video is all about audio. And whilst this is not the worst audio you've ever heard, I want to establish that it can be a lot better than this and it will be a lot better than this. The other thing is I have not redecorated. This is not my home. Um, if it was my home, there'd be cats here. Um, I'm currently in Galway in Ireland and here for Motorfest, which is a mobile video uh, conference festival. Hello everybody and welcome to Mojo Fest 2019! Um, very much geared towards, it is journalism, but very much geared towards uh, smaller cameras. There's a lot of people shooting on iPhones and vlogging type stuff. This is a bit of an exaggeration, but yeah, you've got your stabilized horizontal, you've got your vertical with the mic, and then just in case, you've got the 360, and then you have the uh, point of view. Don't forget though, What's that? The audio. Oh, of course, the audio for this. A proper mic. A proper mic, the Rode Mic Miel. And the uh, first person view here. Really? I've got this one. Really? I don't think this is ridiculous at all. Really? This that, is what everyone should have. That's crossed the line. <laughs> so it's kind of an appropriate place to be talking about um, the, the Rode Wireless Go microphones because they are low budget and they are there to help give you great sound because great sound is so important. So this is the sound of the internal microphone. This is the sound of the Rode Wireless Go. Nice, isn't it? Ever since the 5D Mark II, Canon auto levels have been um, interesting because what they do is when it gets loud, they quiet it down, obviously, and when it gets quiet, they lift up the sound. So here's an example. Hello there. So this is the Canon internal mic, which sounds fine when I'm really close up because it is just here. And then as soon as I stop talking, That's auto levels, not good. And now let's try auto levels on the wireless go. And... Oh, that sounds, it's really lifting up stuff really badly. Tip number one, turn off auto. So manual levels now, this is what you want. I stop talking and Nice, it doesn't lift it all up. And if I talk too loudly, it doesn't bring it down, which isn't so good. But so that's a separate thing. That's about setting your levels before you hit recording. I'm not gonna talk that loudly. I don't think you're hearing the wireless goes at their best right now. And that is simply down to the fact that the Canon has those really bad preamps. The preamp is a way that the camera boosts the incoming audio signal 
to a recordable level. So I think it's important to look at some other cameras just to see how it compares with those. So I'm gonna have a look at a Sony a7 III, the Fuji X-T3, and a Panasonic GH5. So right now we have the receiver set to minus 12 dB. You can hear his, right? That white noise you can hear is because we have the wireless go receiver set to its lowest volume point. That's minus 12 dB. Which means the camera's preamp needs to work harder. If we have a look at our settings, you can see that our levels are eh, fairly high up. Now you can clean up this white noise. It's actually very, very easy. You simply need to make sure that you get a noise print of maybe about, you know, let's say five, six, seven seconds of just the white noise. I'm using the Essential Sound Panel in Premiere right now to remove that, or you could use Adobe Audition, or if you're using Final Cut Pro, I'm sure there is a way of doing noise reduction in there. But you'd rather not have to do all these fixes in post, would you? So to improve this, I am going to boost the level of the receiver. You can't change anything on the transmitter, it's all about the receiver. So that is our output level right now on that little triangle. Because it isn't filled in, that means it's at the lowest level, which is minus 12. We're just going to bring it up one step there. Now we're set to minus six, now it's obviously a bit louder. So I'm going to bring the levels of the camera down. So one, two, three, four, five. There we go, so we have reduced, or a bit lower than that, but we still have noise, as you can hear if I stop talking. So let's boost that again to zero dB. So now as I turn the levels down, we should hear a lot less white noise. It should sound cleaner. One, two, three, four, five. There are, of course, other variables. Basically, if somebody is a very loud talker, then you'll change your levels, or if somebody is very quiet, then you'll raise them. But what if you recorded your levels lower and then boosted it in post, how would it sound? Now at minus six dB, we need to increase our levels to the recording level, one, two, three, four, five. So roughly about here. So let's have a quick listen to the white noise at this setting. So let's compare what it sounds like by boosting it in post. So we're going to bring the levels down uh -huh, and then bring it down to about around there. But I'm gonna boost the levels in Premiere to the correct level and let's hear what the white noise sounds like here. So minus 18 dB on the camera level, still at minus 12 on the wireless go receiver. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously got very strong preamps in this camera because I, I'm bringing it pretty low down on the settings so far and I'm still at minus 12. So let's have a listen to the white noise at this point. There's people working outside, which is annoying. Okay, so let's bring the levels down even lower. <laughs> and uh, there's no way I'm gonna stop him at this point, so we're just gonna have to put up with him. He's a lovely cat, so it doesn't matter. So we're now at minus 24, which is very low. Um, um, you can hear Bert purring in the background. This is a good recording level, and we are very low on the camera's uh, recording levels. So I haven't even managed to boost the actual uh, Rode Wireless Go. Um, let's try it though and see how clean we can get this. This is as low as the Fuji X-T3 goes on audio levels minus 30 dB. And I'm speaking a little bit quieter because if I speak at my normal volume, it's a little bit too loud. The preamps of this camera are really impressive. There we go. So let's hear a little bit of white noise. No oh, burn. <laughs> okay, let's move on to uh, another camera now. I'm at minus 12 right now on the road wireless go, so I need to bring this down uh, to a recording level 
which is um, about here. So we're now at the lowest level that the GH5 can record at, minus 12 dB. Was it at minus 12 on the uh, road wireless go? I can't bring that any lower. It's very high. So in a way, actually, um, it'd be nice to actually have a minus 18 on the wireless go. Because on this camera, um, it's it's quite high. It's, 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 you know, it's a little bit, I can't bring it down any lower. Minus 12 on the Sony a7 III and my level is at six, which is uh, about right. I mean, you could put it a little bit higher, but I think six is a good level for this in this sort of environment with my level we're speaking. So let's push our level up from minus 12 to uh, minus six. One, two, three, four, five. We'll bring our levels down here. One, two, three, four, five. So we're uh, one, two, three, four, five. So now at the lowest setting we can be on the Sony right now, which is one, zero is, is mute. And we're minus six on the road. So at least we have a little bit of flexibility when we're at minus 12, we're not completely at our lowest level with no ability to tweak anything. Unlike the Panasonic GH5, which, uh, you know, is a slight problem because it is a little bit too loud coming in. So let's hit a white noise anyway at minus six with our level set to one. So that means that the preamps on all of the cameras I test are actually pretty good, just not the Canon EOS R. I mean, I've been using wireless microphones for 30, 30 years or so, and old analog ones and incredibly unreliable, specific frequencies for each country. Um, these are Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz. So this is obviously the receiver. Um, it's neat the way it goes onto your hot or cold shoe. It's like a little belt clip and it just slides in there. And then you have uh, your 3.5 millimeter cable that comes with it, going from that into your mic input, very simple. This of course is the, um, what well, is the transmitter, but it's also the microphone right now because why else would I wear a transmitter right on me. Luckily I do have another set. So if I start trying to fiddle with it now, it's going to get lots of operator noise. So what we have um, on the transmitter is a condenser microphone uh, with a polar pattern. So omnidirectional. So it means it picks up everything upside down to side. Um, I'm going to prove it to you. So there we go. This is me talking with it facing you. And this is me talking facing this way. And this is me talking facing me. This is me talking facing that way. This is me talking facing up. And this is me talking facing down. The key thing with an omnidirectional microphone like this is it needs to be close to your source. Now, the further away it goes, obviously it's going to sound weaker and you're gonna lose a lot, so. Um, so here we go, moving it away from me. And let's plonk it over here, which is about a meter from me. So there you go. Now, if this was a shotgun microphone, a good, decent shotgun microphone, like a, a, an NTG, for example, it would be, it would sound good, but it's not. It's not a directional because it needs to be close to the source. There we go. So whilst it is small, it's still too big to see on you. Uh, I'm all about hiding microphones. I never want to see a microphone. Um, so this is sort of like, look, if you, for, for vlogging and stuff like that, uh, seeing something like this is absolutely fine. I'm going to help it by you know, hiding it a little bit. So let's put this here. Um, I just need to have a listen to make sure I'm not getting a lot of uh, rubbing against my chest hair and clothes. Moving around. Yeah, that's okay. I'll live with that for now. I just try not to move too much. Uh, but yeah, so um, it's a bit hid more hidden because I am wearing black, which helps. Um, the key thing is with these, pick, it up, pick up the right one, it does have a 3.5 millimeter input. So you can use one of the road labs into here directly and then just put this on your belt, which means it works like a traditional um, wireless transmitter. If you're gonna use the smart labs, then you need to get a special cable adapter. But I don't have any of those on me. Um, I did bring the smart lab, but I forgot to bring the cable, but I'm hoping 
I may be able to get one tomorrow so I can do a comparison of sound, what's, how that sounds compared to um, the condenser on here. But I, the sound on this is very good, but it's just obviously it's in shot, so that in itself is not ideal. They link up really quickly, as you can see when I turn them on. The other thing it comes with is these uh, fluffies to go over the actual um, microphone and it, uh, it's for wind obviously. Um, it looks incredibly cute but I don't, they give you two, I think they give you two because it, it's, it comes off very easily. So uh, yeah, not super ideal um, but there you go. So it does come with two. Also comes with a neoprene bag. Uh, I'm holding like this because I have a phobia of neoprene. Um, I hate touching it, it just gives me shivers. So <laughs> this is just to show you. Um, yeah, much rather have something like, like that. But uh, it comes with it. So if you have no problem with neoprene, then you're good. This is cheaper and much, much smaller than Rode's other wireless set. So what's been lost in that? Uh, well, the main thing is simply the range. Now, these are designed for close-up stuff and line of sight, uh, not for anything really far away. Now, apparently it will work at 70 meters or up to 70 meters, but that's like optimum conditions. Um, I think tomorrow I'm gonna do a test outside and see what that's like. I'm indoors. Um, my room is not 70 meters big, sadly. Um, it's not anywhere near big enough to test that. But they are designed for being close up for, you're not really gonna be much more than, you know, 10 meters or so. But, uh, but you know, indoors with walls, it's not gonna go well. Mm. I should probably do a test though, shouldn't I? Yeah, I'm gonna do a test. So I'm gonna do a range test now of the wireless go. I'm going to leave the room and just see how far I can walk before it cuts out. Now, of course, I'm not gonna know when it cuts out because I'm not monitoring. So I'm gonna take the um, Osmo action and to film me walking off and leave this going. And um, well, good luck. Let's see what happens. Room key. Don't wanna get locked out, do I? Um, here's my messy thingy. You can see a little blind spot light, which has been lighting me, which is a very cool light. It's just uh, powered. I need to get an extension of that USB cable. It's ridiculous putting that battery up like that, but uh, uh, it does a nice job anyway. Okay, so uh, good luck. Uh, should be enough space on the card, easy enough space on the card, and it's a, a relatively fresh battery. So, okay, um, all right, let's do it. Okay, so this is the audio on the uh, Osmo Action anyway. So I'm just about to leave the room. Here we go. I'm sure it's working beautifully still right now. Oh, hopefully this key still works. Let me just check it. Yeah, I can get back in in a minute. So I keep on walking down and hopefully it's gonna be amazing. It's still probably still going beautifully right now. I'm gonna keep on walking. Okay, head back.
we are. Would be three two nine. Yeah, if you want to come say hello, uh, you know my room number now. Except I've left. Oh, I stopped recording. Why does it stop recording? Card four. Weird. All right, let's see how far it got. So I'm just about to leave the room. Here we go. I'm sure it's working beautifully still right now. Oh, hopefully this key still works. Let me just check it. Yeah, I can get back in in a minute. So I keep on walking down. Well, that was disappointing. Not that far to the door. Uh, big, thick walls, thick door, line of sight. Remember, that's what it needs, line of sight. So yeah, it's, um, it's late now tonight. So I will do a line of sight outside test tomorrow and hopefully get my hands on an adapter to put a microphone into this. I don't have to have this on me like this. <laughs> What's all this then? <laughs> well, I think you should know, Philip, yourself. I have no idea. You tell me. It's new. You've probably seen the wireless go, which yep. we're showing here at the show. Um, very ultra compact wireless mic system. You have your mic, put it onto your, your clothing or your strap or whatever, and that's it, you're done. You've got uh, the receiver here. Well, 31 grams each, so they're very, very light, very simple, very discreet if you want to hide them under a belt or anything like that. So it's just very straightforward, um, simplistic way of, of getting a great signal to your recording device. And what do you think about this microphone? Do you like this one? That, that uh, The video micro there is a superb microphone, different kind of style of recording, so it's obviously it's better, a directional the microphone. The closer I get to you, now you're sounding... <laughs> Am I sounding good now? I'll put my deep voice on now if you want to. So last night in the bedroom, I used your light to light me. Tell me about it. Yep, so the new light we uh, launched on Kickstarter in February was the Crack Light, and it's uh, shipping next month in July. And it is a very portable, flexible, USB-powered light. Now, the great thing about the USB ecosystem is it's dirt cheap. Uh, because it's a computer uh, cable, you can get hubs, extension cords, all for you know, a couple of dollars off of Amazon. Uh, so the, yeah, you can get yourself up and running with some very nice professional lighting for not much of a not much of an outlay. Uh, it only costs thirty five pounds on Indiegogo at the moment. It's also waterproof, so you can uh, totally submerse it uh, underwater, uh, and it's yeah only weighs nineteen grams, which for a light of this caliber is extremely impressive. So off you go, Dan. Okay, well, so there's this guy called Philip Bloom, and he occasionally vlogs and blogs, talks about cameras. Um, Pretty worthwhile. Knows a lot of his stuff. He uh, used to use big cameras, but now he can't bother to carry them anymore, so he uses smaller ones. Occasionally uses phones. Quite often he uses 360 cameras. Um. Okay, so fingers crossed, it's going to be okay. I have no idea when it's going to cut out, but it's a nice walk up the stairs. I'm heading into Galway City to have a, a couple of drinks hopefully shortly as soon as this is done. But fingers crossed it is still rolling. That's the thing is I just don't know but I hope it is. So I'm gonna go all the way up to the top and then I'm gonna come back down again. So there we go. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Pull my trousers up they're falling down. Walking back down at some point, the microphone is going to be received again. And hopefully, this point is pretty clear. I mean, there is stuff either side of me, but direct line of sight. So fingers crossed it should be working beautifully. These, these are about, this set is about short range, about working short range. It has this big distance that it quotes, but it's there to tell you that the Shorter distance is where it's going to work best. So if it can work, if it can get to 70 meters, that means it's going to work best a lot less. So fingers crossed, this was good. 
and I hope I was recording. Okay, fingers crossed it's still working and it's a lovely day, really lovely day here in Galway in Ireland. One more day and then I head home. So no idea if it's still going and my trousers are falling down again. Ridiculous. All the way up to the top. Going. Get to the For $200, I don't know of any other wireless system that is of this quality, that is this good. I mean, it's just so small. I've got it right now. The uh, transmitter slash uh, microphone is, I'm using this right now. But if you're using it with a Smart Lab Plus or a different uh, Rode Lab mic, then you can just use it you know, on the belt. And it's so small that it's just not gonna get in the way. And that's really important with um, a wireless system. I mean, having the microphone in shot like this is really not for me. Uh, I'm all about hiding microphones. So I do really recommend getting a Smart Lab Plus, which would be the basic one, plus the correct cable. Like, I mean, like this, it's better, it's more hidden, but you've got to be careful if you're not monitoring, because, uh, you know, chest hair. So if you've got chest hair, um, then you could get a bit rubbing or against the clothes more likely. I don't know why I went with chest hair, that's a bit strange. The negatives being really just the range. I mean, it's not designed for a big long distance. So uh, line of sight, it's worked pretty well. I think yesterday I got about 60 to 70 meters with the wireless transmitter uh, on my bum. And um, when I had my body shielding it, uh, maybe shave off about 10 to 15 meters for that. But it is designed to be close up. Uh, when it's, you are trying to go through anything like I did with the hotel door and stuff, yeah, it doesn't work very well at all. But you know, with line of sight, with a reasonable distance, most likely you're never gonna go past like 10 meters and, and that'll work really well. So the only other negative is actually part of the positive in that it's the way that it is designed to actually mount on here. Now, if you are using a, you know, you've got a monitor on there or, or something else, um, you know, you can clip this onto a strap or something else because it is a clip and the clip goes onto your cold shoe or your hot shoe. But the uh, downside is it isn't lockable, so it could, it could slide off. So you've got it around your neck and stuff. Um, it could fall off and the cable would stop it, hopefully. Um, so that is kind of the only real negative. You know, it would be nice if you could have this in the video micro on here, uh, a locking connector but uh, it doesn't have it, so a bit of gaffer tape uh, would be a good solution for this. So there you go, um, I've got to pack up because I am going back home to England. In a much shorter follow-up video, I'm gonna show you how to get two separate channels out of your mirrorless or DSLR camera, even though you only have one input. So you can use two sets of wireless GOES or two different types of microphones. This is left, this is right, this is left, this is right. Okay.